この場所を、俺の世界した。俺はここに残すことにない。俺はそこしている場所。Hello everyone, Miyogi Warrior 34 here, and you're watching the Speed Legend characters in Maximum Tune Car Review video, Heroes Edition. Before we begin, as usual, do like the video, comment, and subscribe to this channel for more. Without further ado, we present to you the Seiji Evolution 8 or 9 Car Review. A car made to compete on the World Rally League, the Lancer Evolution was one of the many super sedans to utilize the performance and capabilities of a simple 2.0 liter turbocharged engine paired with a four wheel drive drivetrain. This was the said formula of the Lancer Evolution, which began in late 1992 with the CD9A. As the Lancer Evolution grows from each generation, so does its performance. The CE9A is the most prominent evolution that carried a greater rally history compared to its two predecessors, followed by the CN9A. The prowess of the Land Evo series reached its golden age when during the WRC it was handed to well-famed Finnish rally driver Tommy Mäkinen as he pilots the CP9A6 and won four prominent World Rally Championships for Mitsubishi. A tribute model for the CP9A, dubbed as the Evo 6 TME or Tommy Mäkinen edition, was made under his name. Upon hitting 2003, the Evolution 8 was released, but was dedicated more to tarmac driving and motorsports, although its homologized origins of staying with the WRC are remain intact. In terms of power output, this is the most predominant Evolution that held 400 horsepower under the code FQ400, which was a UK exclusive, proven by Top Gear's Jeremy Clarkson to keep up with the Lamborghini Murcielago around the Top Gear test track. This was also the first evolution to appear with the MR badge, where MR stands for Mitsubishi Racing and holds a 6-speed transmission, an MR exclusive for the EVO series. Carbon lips and spoilers were also another exclusive feature of the EVO 8 MR. It is during the EVO 8 generation that the prime competitor, Subaru's Impreza WRX STI, came to be. The EVO 9 came after with only some aesthetic changes and an engine upgrade, but the rest of the performance points of the 9 and the 8 ended up to be similar. This is where the EVO 9 was equipped with the 4G63 engine plus the MiVec technology. In Subido no Densetsu, a graphic novel and game replay video series by yours truly, this car is driven by one of the legendary characters of the series, Seiji Sushiya. He was once the secondary protagonist of the Akiyama Chronicles story arc, where he had a competitive feud with Daike Akiyama, the hero of the Akiyama Chronicles series. He was once a serious and haughty and proud street racer who was liked and respected by many until he met Daiki, the one man whom he considers his one and only professional rival as not just their skills got in between them but their principles of racing as well. As the story progresses, Seiji became a mild-mannered character who showed little more humility but came out as an anti-sociable only to seek his word as a street racer and professional racer altogether. This did not change the fact, however, that he also came out as a cold-hearted sounding character where the reason of this personality change of his was not just through encountering Daiki Akiyama, but by another phenomenon explained in the Hachiyoji Sushi Chronicle series. By the end of the V series, he is crowned as a super legend of the Lancer Evolution series, dubbed by his fans as the Wangen God, and stayed as an enigmatic being of the Wangen Synth, only to appear to Tomo with the intention of helping him seek his worth as probably he already found his during the Hachioji series. It doesn't say whether or not he'd stop racing, but he'd make his aim certain to have another rematch with Daiki when the time is right. In relation to the story canon, Seiji's Evolution 8 has undergone by the name itself lots of evolutions. Not just aesthetically, but also through its internal performance and worth, all of it to become the ultimate Wangan machine. Considering the fact that the performance of the evolution doesn't come as close to the GDR's Fairlady disease or the Supras in reality. In the Akiyama Chronicles story, from a standard Evo with just a carbon hood for visual changes, his Evo 8 was soon equipped with a carbon fiber straight type GD wing in Volk CE 28s. Internally, by the end of the Akiyama Chronicles arc, it was equipped with the FQ 400 spec with a Wangan tuned high power turbine. By this time, he has dubbed his Evo as the FQ 600. Since technically his EVO 8 by this time is housing more than 600 horsepower for the semi perfect power and torque band. In Hachioji and the V series, it is still a fact that he retained his Evolution 8 but it came out to look more like an EVO 9. This was predominant with the changed front bumper and simple rear bumper inspired by the real Evolution 9. 
The engine spec is retained and was overhauled with the last of the changes being the Yokohama Advan RS wheels. To go with the crowd, he claims this EVO 8 is an EVO 9, but he prefers to call it as the FQ600, that being the custom tag name he gave to his own car. In Wangan Midnight Maximum Tune, this car is one of the very, very popular cars to the point that this car is highly overused by majority of players, similar to that of the BN R34, RX8s, and certain Impreza models. The popularity of the EVO 8 was due to its ease in performance and well-honed balance in both acceleration and handling, and a lot of players proven and not call this car as one of the top tier cars of the game, and maybe well enough to part to that of the R34 of all sorts as quoted by some players. Like the RX8, the best property of the EVO is its overall balance as stated earlier. The car is unstoppable in the hands of a good player, and the car merits a strong ghost as a bonus when played well in ghost battle. Although I personally despise ramfest and stop block battles, the EVO 8 is the best choice for such races, and is a car that is easily collect king crowns and when tuned properly. To have a good in-depth understanding of the EVO 8, here are the strengths and weaknesses that we need to consider. Majority of which may be true to the EVO 9, but not all points are accepted for the latter car. Starting off with the weaknesses, we can conclude the following about these EVOs. It has the high tendency to understeer on or after jump ramps if the placement is bad. Tricky areas such as the Hamazaki branching, some areas of Hakone, and the Osaka Wangensen branching are among the top areas where this is imminent. Probability of this to show is very, very likely. It loses a lot of speed on contact with walls or direct hit with a traffic car's rear. Also a factor in relation to its understeering, the car loses tremendous amounts of speed on high angles. 60% of the time, corner exits for yellow corners require a downshift after the corner to maintain high RPM exit speeds. The top speed of the EVO 8, like most EVOs, are relatively low. This is mostly true in a boost-off battle regardless if it's the 8 or the 9. The EVO 8 has some notable strengths where it almost equals to the main weaknesses it possesses. These are... The car has tremendous amounts of grip retained, so 50-60% to 60 of the time, it has lots of traction and is less susceptible to snap understeer. In Ghost Battle, if used properly, leaves a very powerful ghost for others to race with. Upon your return, you may expect a lot of victories. At Corner Exit, it comes out better than both the R34 and EVO 9 combined, whereas the 9 is a little short against the EVO 8 in this category. Most corners with the EVO 8 can be taken with a simple tap deceleration or maximum acceleration aka full throttle attack. The best RPM range for the EVO is on the red zone all the way to 9000 RPM. Retaining it on the red zone area on its stock tachometer is the best area where the EVO performs at its peak. The tuning setup for the CG EVO 8 are the following. Aero C, Yokohama Advan RS, Carbon Hood, and GT Straight Wing. Though as simple as that of the Tomo R34 in terms of visual aspects, this setup merits a drastic change in performance if compared to the stock Aero. This setup boasts a lot of power and acceleration. It shows a little feel on understeer but is greatly recuperated by the strong acceleration recovery. Its level is strong but it's not as strong compared to the R34's broken recovery. The feel of overall top speed of this EVO 8 is much stronger than that of the usual EVO settings. Nonetheless, setups for the EVO varies according to taste but the creator feels that this is well enough to boost the presence of the Wangan God. Overall, the EVO 8 is already strong as it is. Pushing it further will make it a broken Wangan monster. If you're after ultimate dominance in Wangan Midnight Maximum Tune, then the Seiji EVO 8 is the car for you to order from us, that's for sure. It's beginner friendly, has above average stats, and though not the fastest car in the game, it's fitting for the top tier label for Wangan Midnight Maximum Tune. The tuning of this EVO can be pushed further, but bearing the mark of the Wangan God, we can rank this EVO at a pure A-class tune. It has one predominant weakness, but it doesn't stop the dominance of this Lancer evolution. With that said, I hope this encourages most of you to order the CG Evo 8 and experience it yourself.
Thank you very much for watching this review of the Seiji Evo 8 and if you are interested in purchasing the Seiji Evo 8, just go to our Facebook fan page, like it, and inquire on prices and packages available. You can now contact us via email at subido.no.densetsu at gmail.com. You can also contact me here on YouTube via personal message and I get back to all inquiries as soon as possible. There are no charges with this series product service and it already includes international shipping. If you wish to have the cards earlier, added rate supply. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos to come. We also accept feedback so post away your opinions on the EVO 8. We welcome all quotes from you guys. Stay tuned for the finale of the Speed Legend Character Cars and Maximum Tune Car Reviews, Heroes Edition, coming up soon.